a story that several of the listeners have been sending in for the last day. This tweet came out yesterday, 1255. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com is reporting on Twitter. Fightful Select has learned that talent and staff in AEW have been told Kenny Omega is nearing a return. And the story has come out, and remarkably, it's somewhat similar to what we said on the show. I know. I I read this like two days afterwards. I'm like, seriously, are they now? Is this just a rib on us? They're like, okay, they say that. Well, we'll do it. What did we say on the last show? We said this whole reason for FTR to win all these belts that don't mean anything in AEW. The AAA belts, they mean something in AAA. The IWGP belts mean something in New Japan. Ring of Honor belts, unfortunately, don't really mean anything in Ring of Honor anymore because there is no Ring of Honor, even though they're having a pay-per-view this weekend. <laughs> it's Tony's fucking backwards. Ed. We're going to run pay-per-views, then we're going to start the company again. But the reason to have all of those is to finally have the showdown for the AEW tag team titles, the re- the ones that mean something in this environment, and have it between FTR and the Bucks because the Bucks have been screaming that they're the greatest tag team in the world, and some of their idiot fans actually believe them. And now more people are realizing that FTR are the currently the best tag team in the world, and the only opposition they have for that title, me is Mark and Jay Briscoe, but since... FTR, I think, is a little more polished in the ring, even though Jay Briscoe especially is a little bit better promo. You're neck and neck. You're one and two. It could be a pick em, either team, but not the Hardly Boys. So the idea to be best for business would be for finally the Hardly Boys to have the, the rubber match, number three, they're one and one, with FTR on an AEW pay-per-view event that people would have to pay to see and that there'd be anticipation for and put FTR over so now they have all the belts and the people that are chanting for them that want to see them win all these belts, they are rewarded with that and it helps business. And it shows that the Hardly Boys can somehow, through their dim little brains, recognize when somebody's better than they are and for the business that they're executive vice presidents of, they need to swallow their overinflated egos and do what's right for everybody. Huh, interesting. You we don't, sit. You don't think the better reaction is to immediately turn yourself babyface, align yourself with Kenny Omega and be the champions of the six-man tag division? Well, but wait. We said on the show, but no, they're not going to do that. What they'll probably do is go get Twinkle Toes and go find some more of their fucking kids that they used to play in PWG with when they put their own shows on, like Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. Hey, kids, let's put on a wrestling show. (laughs) Mickey Rooney Jr. just died yesterday. Well, there you go. Well, that's because he heard this news. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to find, they're going to have a six man tag team match with old twinkle toes as their partner. Now bear in mind, last time we saw twinkle toes, he was a heel and the Hardly boys are heels too. But now they're talking about fighting the poor, formerly uh, uh, undisputed era who is now, you know, glorified job guys. Whenever Adam Cole is not injured, where's Kyle O'Reilly been Bobby fish. Somebody needs a, put a worm on a hook and see if they can catch him. There's a lot of people disputing that era. Well, the point is, they've actually come out and said that the idea was to lead to the third match with FTR and the Bucks, but this, they have put those plans on hold. The plans that would have resulted in something that the fans wanted to see, the plans that would have resulted in FTR getting... Oh, more over than they are right now because of good booking. The plans that would have made sense have been put on hold because the Young Bucks have decided to bring Kenny back and have a play match with their friends. And that's what they are labeling as a major angle, quote unquote, that's more important than what they were going to do. 
And, and some of their fans are buying that. Like, that is a really a legitimate statement. They don't want to put these fucking guys over. They can't admit that now even their own fans are starting to turn on them because it's the same shit constantly and people are tired of it. And they like a better team that's more talented. And instead of going with that, because they're also executive vice presidents of this, of this company, and they should be wanting the company's success, but that's Tony Khan's mistake that he gave these jack-offs that position, but they don't care about the company. They don't want to do the job. They don't want to admit they're not as good as they think they are. They don't want to admit that FTR is better. They don't want to admit that people think that, and they don't want to prove it in the ring. They want to bring back Harpo and play with their friends, and that's what's going to happen. And we called it last week. Well, let's... let's Major play, angle. Let's play devil's advocate. Harpo's ready to come back. He's been honking his horn. He's ready to go. He's got his big coat with all of his pockets. I guess that's a bad comparison considering there is a pockets in AEW. Harpo's ready to come back. The Young Bucks are very sensitive. And they didn't like the fact that they got not even booed out of the building. They got... What do you call it when someone just yells the name of someone they like better at you? They got they got grudge chanted. <laughs> grudge chanted. A grudge chant. Out of the building. We've been saying it for a while. People are catching up. People are getting tired of their act. People are getting tired of them. As soon as Nick Jackson gets in the ring, you know what he's going to do? He's going to grab the guy's hand and he's going to run to the rope and do a twisting tumble salt off. I've seen it all the time. And they don't want to drop the belts to FTR. So think about where we're going to go now. You got to figure FTR are going to get the belts, either from Lee and Swerve, which doesn't really mean anything as FTR versus the Young Bucks for all the belts would. There isn't a single team in AEW that if they were going to win the AEW tag titles off, it would mean anything like it would the Young Bucks. Tony, right. as a booker, you know he knows that. No, he doesn't. You don't he's think he a, knows he's, that? He, he's playing a booker on television. He's not a booker. And he's listening to... How else is it that they, they go to him and say, well, instead of that big blow-off match with FTR, what about if we bring Kenny back and have a six-man tag? And they'll, and they'll sell that to him. Like, that's why they're calling it a major angle, because they have got Tony Khan believing that having Kenny Olivier come back on a program is going to be a big major fucking deal. And I will admit that I'm pissed off at Twinkle Toes because he proved me wrong, and I don't like that. How many years have I been saying, how can I miss you if you won't go away? He goes away, and we don't miss him. And that's why he's rushing his comeback, because he's sitting there going, you know what? <laughs> The only time even people even talked about me in the last three months is when I tried to joust with Cornette on Twitter and got slapped down. Yeah, he's going to try to rush to come back before Punk gets back. That's the well, other th thing. There he's got to beat that yeah. because... So, so he's probably saying, hey, I don't care if I got to fucking pour myself into a plaster body cast. I better get back there and do what I can do because they're going to forget about me completely. How is that? The pro no viewers have been lost. The viewership, the ratings are up and down based on their other rotten talent and rotten programs, but it's not appreciably better or worse since Kenny's been gone. Nothing changed. They've still had matches. We'll have more hands-on booking now with the women's division. He's done such a great job I was about of booking. To, well, as a matter of fact, for a little while, the women's division started to get better because his untrained mud show amateur joke underage Japanese fetish objects were limited. Hey, I'm wondering, if Cody Rhodes signs an NDA, does that mean Brandy... Ro well, we don't know if she signed an NDA. I'm wondering. There's so much I'd like to hear people say, but let me ask you this. Let's look on the bright side. If Kenny Omega's really as banged up as he says, a six-man makes some sense. If they're going to take all of these guys, Bucks, Omega, let's say Dark Order and Page, Rick Knox, Put them all together and have them have a trios division, Undisputed Era, sadly, because Kyle O'Reilly's being wasted. Yeah. If they're going to do that and keep them all in one trios division and keep them out of the tag team division, out of the singles division, how do you feel about that? Can they be out of the TV division? 
Uh, there are others who are out of the TV division, actually, so technically they could be, yes. Then I would be in favor of that. Why don't they send all the trampoline cowboys to Ring of Honor? Because that's where they started 15 years ago with just, you know, 140-pound guys doing fucking gymnastics. And that way, the original Ring of Honor fan base, if they're still around, they can enjoy that with the new trampoline cowboys, and we can put all the wrestlers like the Punks and the FTRs and the Lethals and the Samoa Joes and the Hobbses and the Starkses and the Wardlows and on and on, we could put them on AEW and they could have a good television program. Maybe that would be a split your genres, Tony. Don't split your roster. Put the pretend wrestlers on in one company and the real ones in the other company and then see which one does better. That'd be an idea. <laughs> 